On this edition of Murray County Now, get a taste of this year's chili cook-off. Spin your way into the Studio Columbia. Historic Murray County goes grave. And finally, see the Arts District's newest business, the windmill. All this and more on this edition of Murray County Now. Hello and welcome to Murray County Now, Columbia and Murray County's magazine news show covering Murray County. The Kiwanis Club of Columbia is spicing up the annual chili cook-off. Here's Kelly McCall and Dwayne Beck of the Kiwanis Club to give you a sample of this year's event. Hello, I'm Kelly McCall, this year's chairman of the Kiwanis Chili Cook-Off. This year we're taking over the reins of the current chili cook-off. The event is scheduled for October 22nd at Elm Springs. It will start at 11 o'clock and end approximately 3 p.m. or whenever we run out of chili. We will have inflatables, a petting zoo, a balloon guy, face painting, tons of chili, a live band all throughout the day, and arts and crafts, vendors, you name it, it's there. Your perfect fall festival. Chili Cook-Off began as actually a fundraiser for March of Dimes. March of Dimes transferred it to Junior Auxiliary of Columbia. Kiwanis of Columbia is excited to take the reins this year. The event will kick off at 11 a.m. We'll have tons of chili. We'll judge the chili. We'll announce judging winners approximately 2.30. Um, it will end at 3. Throughout the event, you can enjoy children's festivities, arts and crafts, vendors, a live band, all for the cost of $5. I think every community enjoys Fall Festival. It's the last time for folks to get out, enjoy some of the nice weather. Before winter comes, it'll be uh, October the 22nd when the chili cook-off is will be just about the peak of the leaves changing. Uh, we're going to have a lot of kids activities so get out with the family, enjoy the last of the nice weather before winter gets on us and um, help a good cause. You can find out more information about the chili cook-off at our Kiwanis Chili Cook-Off Facebook page or at the Kiwanis Columbia TN Facebook page as well. Downtown Columbia's growth is moving and shaking and the Studio Columbia is here to add a little flair to the scene. We spoke to owners Megan White and Janet Christensen about how they're making steps with this new business. Hi, I'm Megan White. I'm the co-owner and director of the Studio Columbia, which is a mind-body fitness center in Columbia, and we also house the Columbia School of Performing Arts, which is a dance studio. The Studio Columbia is a mind-body fitness center. We offer Pilates, yoga, um, Pilates Reformer, we have Zumba, UJAM Fitness, a little bit of everything. Columbia School of Performing Arts is a comprehensive dance program that offers ballet, tap, jazz, hip-hop, modern for all ages. We start at age two and we go all the way through adult. Hi, my name is Jana Christensen. I am the co-owner and co-director of the Columbia School of Performing Arts and the Studio of Columbia. In Columbia, we felt like there was a need for a boutique fitness place where you could come and take different classes and get mind-body fitness classes. We currently offer, um, through the Columbia School of Performing Arts, uh, a bunch of different genres, but our uh, main focus is the preschool age. We start with two-year-olds, and we teach them uh, creative movement, tap, tumble. It's a 45-minute class where they can really just have creative expression, um, interactive play, and um, experience movement. So we have some upcoming performances um, here in Columbia. We are going to participate in the um, Halloween downtown event and have a flash mob and be outside passing out candy. We also have an upcoming performance at the King's Daughter School, um, which we're excited about. And we will also be um, a part of the Christmas parade this year. The Studio Columbia is located downtown Columbia right on 7th. Our hours are a little sporadic. Right now we offer fitness um, about four times a day, early morning, mid-morning, sometimes a lunch hour, and then in the evening. And all of our dance classes either happen early morning for the little ones or between four and seven for the older kids. You can find out more information at columbiaschoolofperformingarts.com or at thestudioofcolumbia.com. We'll be back with more Murray County Now after this.
You don't want just a house. You want a home. Something comfy and cozy that brings your family together. And eScore has a few tips to help you get there. Replacing your refrigerator, appliances, and electronics are key elements in creating a more comfortable and energy efficient home. Many of the everyday items around your house have a huge impact on how much you spend on your energy bills each year. For example, when combined, the use of your dishwasher, television, computer, refrigerator and washer, and other electronics account for almost 30% of your home's energy usage. But you can minimize that number and save yourself a lot of money by replacing your old electronic devices and household appliances with Energy Star certified models. Here are a few great energy savers. Front-loading washers generally use 50% less energy than top loaders. An energy-efficient refrigerator uses 15% less energy than non-certified models. And Energy Star computers could save as much as 65% on energy usage compared to standard models. Not only that, but by switching to energy-saving equipment, you can wash clothes and dishes more effectively, save water, and take advantage of the power management features on your electronics, all while keeping your home more comfortable than ever. Want to make your house the home you've always wanted? After making these important upgrades, take advantage of your free eScore evaluation to receive free instant savings measures and cash rebates on future upgrades. Visit our website today at 2eScore.com or call us at 1-855-2eScore. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. And now, back to more Murray County Now. Murray County is known for being full of life, but nothing tells the history quite like the dead. Here's Adam Southern to dig deep on this edition of Historic Murray County. Well, I'm Adam Southern, and this is another edition of Historic Murray County. And today we're at Rose Hill Cemetery, one of my favorite places. The reason this is one of my favorite places is because really this is where Murray County's most interesting citizens are. And I'm standing right here beside some of them. Uh, this is the plot of the Smith family. And now we've talked about the Athenaeum a whole lot on this show. And uh, this is where the founding family of the Athenaeum is buried. Uh, this tall obelisk here beside me, this is the grave of Franklin Gillette Smith and his wife Sarah, the founders of the Columbia Athenaeum. And right here in this section, there's so much history. Just a stone's throw away behind me is the grave of Elizabeth Pillow Porter, probably best known as Miss Lizzie. Now, Miss Lizzie was the most eccentric character Columbia has known in recent times. She died in the 1960s at the age of 105 years old. She was known to sit on her front porch during the summertime wearing a full length fur coat. And a lot of people sweared that underneath this coat, she had a pistol and would shoot at you. Now, not many people were scathed by Miss Lizzie, but a lot of houses were shot up late at night. Now, a lot of people think that's a made up story. But when she died in 1965, they went to her back porch and she had a large metal urn by her back door. It was filled up literally with hundreds of bullet cartridges where she would come home each night and empty out her pistol. So the eccentric Miss Lizzie's just right here in this section. Just over this way, we have the grave of Nathan Vault, Murray County's master builder. We talk a lot about him on the show, Nathan Vault built more fine homes in this county than any other person, many of them still standing. He built the beautiful Athenaeum, Elm Spring, so many more. He's buried up the hill between his two wives. Now right here, right beside me here, actually we have the grave of the Van Staverns. That's not a name you hear a lot of here in Columbia, Van Stavern, but it's on the back of this picture. He was an art teacher at the Athenaeum and uh, his wife, two infant children died. He opened a, a photography gallery here in Columbia, later on went to Nashville. And you can still see his name sometimes on these old pictures. 
On Saturday, October 22nd, the fine folks of the Athenaeum will be here at Rose Hill to lead tour goers around the cemetery. We'll be having the Rose Hill Cemetery Tour starting at 7 o'clock. You never know who's going to show up on these cemetery tours. You, I can guarantee you though, you'll meet some of the fine residents of this cemetery, hear their stories, and find out how they became a resident of this cemetery. Now the first tour starts at 7, the second tour is at 8.30. If you would like more information about the tour, please call me at 931-626-8368. Price is $10 per person, and all the tour benefits the Athenaeum. This has been your look at Rose Hill Cemetery. If you want to read more about this cemetery, come see me at the library. Thank you. Columbia has its fair share of made-from-scratch businesses, and the Windmill Bakery is now part of the recipe. We spoke with co-owners Jennifer Kerr and Warren Green about the bakery and how it's mixed up in the Arts District. Hi, I'm Warren Green. I'm one of the co-owners of the Windmill Bakery and Coffee Shop, and I want to welcome you to the Windmill. Hi guys, my name is Jennifer Kurt. I'm one of the co-owners here at the Windmill Bakery and Coffee Shop. We are one of the first brand new businesses here in Columbia in the Arts District. We are excited to see what we can bring to Columbia. The Windmill is a bakery and coffee shop. We feature Mule Town Coffee. I'm the head barista, and we also are located in the Arts District, and I'm a, an artist myself. The Arts District is going to be the next place that is going to be not considered just a place of Columbia, it's going to be a destination. People are going to be going to the Arts District, and with that, we felt like getting our foot in the door was going to be the most successful route for the windmill to be a successful business. We specialize in everything being homemade from scratch. We have recipes that have been handed down from generation to generation in my family. I was born and raised in Columbia and I've taught painting for almost 20 years and uh, I was ready to get, come back home and it was perfect timing to be, become part of not just the, this bakery but the Arts District where I have a studio. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to be here in the Arts District. Uh, a lot of artists are already coming in. Uh, a lot of people are very excited about what's happening in Columbia uh, because it's not just not just the arts, but good authentic food being made here. Uh, it's it's really all about the senses. I have always loved being in the kitchen ever since I was about 12 years old. I've been in the kitchen baking and cooking. My mother and my grandmother, thankfully, have instilled in me a passion and love for baking. And so with that, I went to culinary school. And from there, I went on to work for public supermarkets for about nine years as a manager for them and decided it was time I wanted to follow my dream, and that was having my own bakery. We serve muffins and breads and artisan breads um, and gluten-free and all sorts of, of uh, great treats. Muffins in the morning along with scones, and we've just rolled out all of our fall lines, so we have everything pumpkin. We also offer brownies and cookies, uh, jumbo cupcakes, which are delicious. And we will be also offering mini cakes and uh, filled chocolates. We're looking forward to for you coming to the Windmill Bakery, uh, where we can get to know you uh, and have some really great conversations over some really good food. Everything that we make here, we want to bring a sense of home to everybody, a sense of warmth and happiness, which is why everything's made from scratch. We choose to make all of our products hoping that they are to the highest quality. I think this is a really good time to, to be in Columbia because Columbia looks like it's going to grow in a way that's uh, unique to itself. It's not just in the shadow of Nashville. Uh, there's something really authentic happening and a, and a great sense of community among a lot of the business owners here. The windmill is currently on Facebook. You can find us at the Windmill Bakery and Coffee Shop on Facebook. We are also on Instagram as well. And we have a website that are, we are fixing to have up and running all the way. And we also have business cards that are located at different locations and businesses around town. To find out more information about any of the stories you've seen on this edition of Murray County Now, check out our website at murraycountynow.com and look in the show notes for more details. Murray County Now is produced by Columbia TNTV. From all of us here at Murray County Now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.